Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be racing the Audi R8 V10 Plus. At Donington. So, yeah. it's only up the road from us again. Yep. I do like this track. I really, yeah, really is. do like Donington. Home is home. Yeah, I, su I suppose oh, so. Home is where the heart is. Is that, is that the same? Yeah, home is where the heart that's is. The, that's the one, yeah. Then again, where is your heart in terms of racing tracks? Donington or Silverstone? Yeah, okay, fair <laughs> enough. Right, okay, anyway, moving on. <laughs> Okay, so this is a free car given, free car given to us uh, by Kunas, yeah. um, part of the 1.35 update. Yeah. Uh, but now we're in the 1.36 update. Yeah, which is, I think the 1.36 was just a, a small hot fix. This one actually introduced the car, and it introduced uh, a number of bug fixes for individual cars, which was quite interesting. And also surface rolling heat generation. Now I know you're big on the whole feeling the tires. Yeah. Um, especially when you you know you're turning the steering wheel and the heat build up in the tires, you were big on that when when it first came out. Well, they've, they've sort of upped it a bit in this, okay. so it's it's actually quite interesting. And I'm running this with tire wear on, so, so that should be interesting. You're gonna see the uh, the car become more and more difficult to drive as the laps go on. Oddly enough, though, my laps got faster, but that's probably because I was getting more used to the driving of the car yeah. as opposed to the tyres going I don't going know why off. but that tends to happen to me I think you said you tend to work out when to brake I'm not, I mean you, you, you normally associate that with a lap uh, with the actual lap itself but yeah. with cars now you tend to oh I can brake here yeah. rather than before with another car but it's quite quite interesting that is. it is quite interesting because I thought my lap times would drop off dramatically but it turned out that while like I said it became harder to drive the car do you reckon you were peaking with the tyres then I think so. I think there, there was a peak with them because I felt, I, I'd say, not this lap, but I think about two laps in, I felt that the tyres were really at their, at their fastest. And if I yeah. was driving the car flat out then, I probably would have got the fastest right. lap time. So the that, optimum, your optimum lap, what, is two, three laps in then? No, actually, my optimum lap's the second to last lap. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But oddly enough, I think that was the lap that I went almost flat out in. And after that, it, the tyres were gone. Okay. So there was no way I was getting a faster lap. Uh, but, you know, we said that it bought that in, which I think that must be the V6 tire model because that's what this car's on. Mm -hmm. And then it bought some performance tweaks, not car performance, as in simulator performance tweaks. So, especially for multi-threaded um, multi uh, physics. So we're looking at those with, you know, the, the extra cores uh, getting a little bit more out of it. Okay. Which is great because, you know, simulators um, historically have had issues with multi-core multi, multi -core physics. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it looks like they're getting on top of these now. Not just a set of course, you know, even flight simulators and train simulators are getting on top of this now. Um, well, with, the, it's there, there. It's, well, the actual technology is there now. Yeah, exactly, the well technology is there. You've got to make good use of it. The, the whole 64-bit thing, yeah. the whole, you know, eight cores or whatever it is, you know, four processors, six processors, whatever you want to use. So they had that, and then they had the 1.36 update. It was just a hot fix, a few other bugs here and there. And they moved uh, one of the Ferraris... Uh, the Ferrari 458, I think it was the S3 version. Uh, they moved that onto the V6 tire model as well. Okay. So. So all are all the cars on the V6. Not yet. Okay. They're they're moving them on slowly. This one is. Okay. This is the first. Uh, so that's a nice way I think to move on to the car. Uh, Audi R8. Yeah. It's, it's the second one we've raced, isn't it? It's the second one. The first one we had was the race car, the LMS yeah. one. But the R8 was your first concepted back in uh, 2003 as the Le Mans Quattro, which I actually mentioned back in when we were doing, doing that the one, yeah. LMS yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, and then in 2007, obviously, they revealed it as the R8 uh, as a full production model. But that had a, if you remember, that had a V8 engine, the 4.2-litre yeah, 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 V8s. Yeah. So then they came out with a V10 engine a, a couple of years later. I think it was 2009, I think they came out with a v, V10 engine. And then we've got this, which is a V10 Plus. Now, they had a facelift, which you probably noticed. The lights look a bit different to the R8s we see yeah. around. This is quite... A little bit of a facelift. Now, this isn't a Mark II. The Mark II, I believe, come out this year. Yeah, two, this the, is a the, 2014. Yeah, the two, yeah, the 2014 and a 2015 edition. Yeah, and the 2015, I think, is a Mark II because I think it's got a whole new uh, underlying chassis. It looks fairly the same, yeah. uh, apart from the lights look vastly different. But in terms of body styling, it looks pretty much the same. But I think there's been a lot of changes in that car that makes it warrant a Mark II, I think. But this, like we said, it's just a facelift of the Mark One. Um, it's it's the plus. <laughs> it says V10 plus. The plus basically means that it's lighter and more powerful okay. and more torque. That's about it. 
um, you know, you've got carbon fibre everywhere now. Um, uh, the more carbon fibre, the better for weight yeah, distribution, obviously, obviously, yeah, obviously and yeah. weight. And it's also got forged aluminium wheels, okay. so it makes it lighter again because it's all made out of one piece instead of, you know, a, a, a three-piece rim set or something. Yeah, and it's then made weld it together. One, and, yeah. yeah, exactly. All the welds and everything would add weight, so yeah. they just forge it all as one thing in a cast and I'm job sure, done. I'm, I'm assuming this is going to cost more, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it is significantly increased the cost, but we're not going to even go into the cost because I think this car is around 130, 140 grand. Wow. Okay. Uh, compared pounds. to normal. Pounds. Yeah, that's in pounds. Talking dollars, probably $190,000 yeah. or thereabouts. Um, the original version, the not plus version, should we say, uh, the bog standard V10, bog standard, yeah. <laughs> uh, is probably around 20 grand cheaper, to be completely honest. Um, but that being said, we'll move on to the specs, and there are some upgrades on it. Yeah, um, well, 550 brake, um, that's 25 up from the current, well, not current one, the previous one. Yeah, the standard V10 yeah, of this. Standard V10, yeah, and, mm-hmm. and it pushes out at 8,000 8, RPM. Yeah, which is interesting because if you look, the red line is around 8.5. And, and you just see it on the. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm getting the most power, right there, which happens to be just before a turn, which is horrible. <laughs> Um, but we've got 540 newton meters of torque, much lower. But that's up again. That's up 10 newton meters mm. uh, from the original, and that's uh, at six and a half thousand RPM. And you do feel it, which was just about there. Mm. I actually did feel that torque at that at that point. There was definitely torque there, and it is like we said, a 5.2 liter yeah. uh, V10 FSI. Yeah, FSI engine. I don't know whether the FSI is now just a brand uh, a badge that they put on it because I, I don't know whether this the engines are still FSI engines which is interesting be. it must be a FSI they can't just put it on there well I think it's just a name that's now continued associated. yeah associated with the Audi okay the, the engine type is now FSI but it's not actually what FSI originally was okay so I mean, if, if any of our viewers know anything about that just leave a yeah, comment yeah leave, so leave can, a comment yeah. now and for those who don't actually know what, what FSI is it's basically in, in very very simple terms it's just when the car's cold so when let's say you start it up on a cold morning it directs the fuel more towards the spark plugs okay right? yeah. and then as it warms up it moves it more towards the pistons in a sense so that you get more power so that's that's basically how an I FSI didn't know that, engine so works I've learned something today <laughs> yeah that, that's basically how an FSI engine works um, not exactly the best of technology I'll be honest I didn't I didn't rate it that highly but hey if it works, it works, it works right? Yeah, well, yeah, it's it's working for the, the R8 because yeah. it's quite a quite a good selling car, isn't it? It is, yeah, and it's a very nice car. And you can see here now I'm getting a lot a lot more used to the car, but the tires are starting to go off, so I'm starting to slide a lot more, which is kind of interesting. Uh, again, seven speed gearbox. Uh, it does come in a six speed manual, but this is just a seven speed paddle shift. Only seven, um, speed, yeah. So not uh, I would have liked the manual as well, but uh, hey, maybe they'll release that later because mm. they did with the Alfa Romeos. Mm. And the four, four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive. Wow. Quattro, yeah. as, it, as oh, yeah. it is. There you go. And you've got 0-60 in 3.3 seconds. There's a spin. 0-60 uh, in 3.3 seconds. And quite a nice top speed, to be honest. Yeah, 197. It, 3.3, and it's, it's, it's rapid, isn't it? It is it's really absolutely. I mean, anything you're talking about, I think anything sub 3.5. I think anything sub 4 you can class as getting pretty fast. Yeah, well, and it, yeah. but that's impressive. Um, does weigh a bit, though. Yeah. Uh, 1.6 tons. Now, can you imagine without the carbon fiber and the forged wheels wow. and all that kind of stuff, it would probably be another 100 yeah. kilos on probably that. Probably in closer to 2 tons. Um, yeah. But 1.6 tons. Heavy car. Definitely a heavy, heavy car. car. Definitely. But I tell you something, it didn't feel so heavy when you were driving it. Mm. Um, you know, some cars when you drive, they, they feel heavy. Yeah. Uh, they I'm, I'm, just, I'm looking at that, I'm, at that weight and then I'm looking at the, the 0 to 60. I can't help but feel if that was slightly lighter, that 3.3 seconds would be we shave easily. Shave down to two, two and a half, maybe two point, two point six. Yeah, I'm probably thinking probably 7. near about three second mark. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean another hundred kilos they need to shave off this car really, and they'd, they'd get it down sub yeah. three seconds easy. Uh, but it's it's incredible engineering how far engineering has come on these kind of cars, uh, considering that not so long ago a 1.6 ton car would be, you know, have a, a 0-60 to 60 of 7 seconds, yeah. 8 seconds. You know, more like our road cars now. Yeah. Uh, this is a road car, though. 
no, this is yeah, but this is a supercar. I'm talking about you yeah. know, your, your normal. Would, would you class it as a supercar? Yeah, this is definitely a supercar. Okay. I mean, at one point, the early R8, the V8 version, I'd probably have classed that as a sports car mm. because it was more comp- competing against like the the Porsche 911 and stuff like that. With this V10 and the V10 Plus, it's it's just in that supercar region now. It really is. It's at that region with the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis and all that kind of stuff. Um, moving from that now, Sim, how did it feel in the Sim? Well, you drove it, so I think I'm going to let you start with it first. Well, I think if we just go through what we see here on the models as I like fishtail everywhere. Yeah. Be- uh, before we get into that, yeah. one thing I mean, what, one thing we were saying, uh, what I was saying is the noise. Um, how I was quite pleasantly quite impressed with the noise inside the car and outside. And you're probably going to say, well, that's all cars, they're all different. But this is very different. Yeah. I, th- I, I mean, I felt it was, I mean, not two different cars, but it would, they took it at a, at a different angle. Yeah. Uh, a lot of cars, all they do is just amplify the sound, isn't it? When you yeah, amplify and just give it a bit of a different tweak. This yeah. felt like it had, it had a positional sound. Yeah, different. That, that's what I meant. Different angles. Yeah. yeah, all like you said, different angles. It sounded different inside the car. Sounded nothing like outside the yeah. car. No. Yeah, it's inside the car. Sounded like what you'd expect yeah. inside the car, and outside the car sounded what you'd expect outside the car, which we know some mods haven't done. Yeah. Um, but I think Kunos, obviously, they know they know what they're doing. Yeah. And they, they've done a really, really good job. I think this may be my fastest lap coming up. I'm not too sure. There you go. You can see how I'm how I'm sliding. But that will mean we can swiftly move on. Yeah. Since this is going fast, we've got to go fast. Yeah. <laughs> Top modeling from Kunos. Again, yeah. uh, you, you really can't fault their modeling and texturing, can yeah. you? They've got matte colors in this as well, which was I was quite impressed wow. with. Uh, this has actually only got uh, matte black, you know, the, the black side pods yeah. um, or the side stripes. That's the only thing that's actually matte. I decided to go with the metallic color. I like metallic, yeah. I, I just do. Uh, but the, the texturing inside and out is just so, so good. Kunos just continue to impress, don't they? Yeah, I mean, the, what, everything they've done on this car is just on point. Yeah. Um, yeah. The sound, modeling, um, the fact it's free. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's the main part. Uh, and also the physics. Physics were really, really good. I mean, this this new V6 tire model, it's got subtle changes over the V5, uh, which we know the V5 wasn't released that long ago, was no, it? No. It's only been, what, maybe six, seven weeks? Yeah, two months, yeah. Yeah, Ish, so, something yeah. like that, around two months where, yeah. where that uh, Dream Pack 2 came out. That's when it was released. Uh, but this, it... It understeered, as expected, but then again, you'd, you'd expect the car to understeer because it's a four-wheel drive. Yeah. High-speed understeer, definitely, but not as much as I thought it would. Because you know, sometimes you go around the corner and you think, this car is just going off and off and off. You, yeah. you, there's no way you're going to make the corner. There were ways to get this car to make the corner, and I was really, really happy about that. One is that if you threw it into corner sharply, now, you know, you always see people like... Uh, uh, what's his name Chris Harris and Jeremy Clarkson and Tiffany Dale and they always th- throw the cars into corners the stick yeah. as well they throw the cars into the corner and you see it slide yeah. somewhat you can see a bit of understeer there you see it slide and then you see them counter steering but it looks poised and perfect you could do that with this car and I think it's this V6 tyre model that's brought a new it, sense it, of is, natural driving. Is there a way we could actually switch back to V5 and then V6 and, and, and then show comparison? I don't, don't think no. so. Okay. I don't think so because this car never had a V5. Ah, okay. But you can see that when, you, when I'm driving, um, in certain corners, I was just taking it, throwing it into the corner and then just sliding it with ease through this corner. And what? the feedback was nice and yeah. heavy what, as well. What, 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 I mean, what... I've, what I've noticed is there's a bit of understeer on the corners yeah definitely there is definitely understeer especially in the uh, mid to high speed yeah. range low speed I think it handles really well but I think that's the car and not that's the, the dynamic mod. yeah that's yeah. the dynamic of the car not not the f- uh, problem with the physics uh, because like you said four wheel drive you are going to get understeer oh, yeah. 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 but four wheel drive works really well when you're when you're on fast roads that don't have that many turns and you want to get off the line quickly so the acceleration on this car, we've seen, yeah. really, really good. Uh, but it, it just felt like a really, really nice car. And remember we said that the BMW M4 was the best out of that Dream Pack 2? Yes, yes. I'd say this is better. I reckon. To, this was better to drive. Maybe it's to do with the V6 tire model. Maybe that's, that's what's I think making it. we might it. have to hit the M4 again for 
yeah, drive when, once, I, I once mean, they've sorted the V6. Once they've put the V6 on that, I'll have to check if they've got the V6 on that. And maybe we'll take the M4 out again. Now let's see, is this is this where we get quite a significant amount of understeer? No, you can see here, the car is just sort of more poised yeah. now. I mean, Even I'm, though I'm just, losing just, the Just tires. to get that corner quite well, actually. Yeah. Even though I'm starting to lose the the tires here, and you can you can see that I'm, I'm making more adjustments with the wheel yeah. because I'm losing the tires, but you can see that it's not it's not struggling that no, much. No, it's really not struggling that much, and I I like that. I like that. I don't like a car that you have to fight with constantly all the time. You know, I, I want a car that the back end can get out, and we can sort of wrestle it, but not feel like oh this car if you let go for a single second it's just going to throw you off which is exactly what this I mean, car was like i mean i'm not i'm just listening there's nothing to do with the modeling itself or with kunas but i'm not i'm looking at the r8 right now inside and does is it me or does this just look like a box standard audi a4 yeah I, w I would say it looks yeah a bit yeah you are right there's, uh, there's not the much on there apart from that it's got r r8 and v10 uh, in the dials but yeah it looks like my, my friend's audi a4 yeah, it, it is. It is very. I, I think Audi. I think actually German cars generally they keep things very subtle inside. Mm. They just leave it as it is, bog standard. There you go. You don't need the. You don't need a flashy inside. You've got a flashy car. You've got the power. Yeah, and there you go. You can see that was my fastest lap. Yeah. I won th a forty-three-eight. Now my tires are gone. <laughs> this last lap. I think this is the last lap. My tires are gone. So while while we str while I struggle around with this car. What do you think you're going to rate this? Um, um, as a Kunos car, obviously not as a, as a mod. Model. Um, I know what you're going to give it because you just told me before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be that kind though. Oh, okay. No, I'm not going to be that kind. Um, 9.5. I think that's fairly kind because I was, I was going to give it a 9.8. Okay. Um, I do feel it's better than the M4. But I, I we can't haven't, comment on it. We until, can't consider until, exactly because it's different time models. So exactly. So I've got to give it a nine point eight, and that M four still holds it for now. Don't ask me why I'm not giving it a full marks ten. Um, because I don't know. I just there's not. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't feel fun driving it. Really? No. I, I felt it was quite fun, apart from the understeer. Yeah. I have to say the understeer did. That's probably did the car itself. Bit, I, don't yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. It, for me to looking inside the car, I mean, I'm criticizing the car itself now, not yeah. the mod. But 9.5 for me. Fair enough. I think that's that's pretty good, and I think that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you, Kunos, for another free car, and we are looking at, I believe, Dream Pack three landing at the end of December. Brilliant. So we're gonna have even more cars to review. So thank you very much for watching. Please remember to hit the like button if you like this video. Subscribe to our channel for more videos on a set of course. So let us know in the comments box below what you think of this R8 and what you think of the Dream Pack 2 because there's been some uh, Dream Pack 3 because there's been some announcements for that. And uh, we hope to see you next week.